So, first of all, I was goaded into this talk this morning. So I signed up this morning, I wrote the talk this morning, and I'm going all in with an actual hardware demo as well. So it's like, how many things can I do, can go wrong? We're gonna see if we can get them all to go wrong. So stick with me. So just for clarity, um, I'm new to Go. I just started writing serious Go about a month and a half ago. Um, I'm not new to IoT. I'm not new to hardware hacking. I am absolutely not a hardware engineer, so if you look at what I've put together here, you will know that just by looking at it. And um, I learn as I go, and I make stuff up all the time. So most of this is probably made up. Um, and luckily, you're not going to see a whole lot of my code, so you won't actually be able to tell that. So this, um, I wanted to be able to access some sensors from a Raspberry Pi. And I did not feel like doing any more C or C++ that day. I was just done with it. Um, I really didn't want to do any Arduino that day because I'm really done with Arduino. And since I didn't want to write any C, I also didn't want to write any C Go because I don't know how. So I figured I'll just port the driver to Go. It'll be easy, right? Um, so, you know, if your brain works that way, see me afterwards. We can start a support group because if you think the easiest thing to do here is to port the driver to go from C, then you have the same problem I did. Um, so I started with the C code. I went and found a C driver that worked. I compiled it. It worked on the Raspberry Pi. It was great. Um, and I just started copying sections of C code into my Go file, and then line by line, how do you do this in Go? How do you do this in Go? How do you do this in Go? And um, then I, of course, delete the C because it wouldn't compile with the C in there. Um, and I did that line by line until I had a driver in C, in Go, that actually worked um, and does what I want it to. So it kind of looked like this. Um, I'm absolutely not going to endorse the C code up there that the other guy did, because that's bad. Even I know that. Um, and I may or may not endorse the Go code, because that may be bad as well. But it works, and, uh, and I'm able to, so I wrote two. In fact, I wrote one for a temperature and humidity and pressure sensor, and then I wrote one for this industrial CO2 sensor as well. Um, so how long did it take me? Well, I was on PTO that week. Um, so if you do PTO like I do, then, you know, again, see me afterwards. There's a support group probably. I was avoiding my house guests that were there, which is why I took PTO. Um, and it took me about a day in between other activities that I had to do with my house guests. So I would, you know, go hide in my office and do a little bit, and then I'd feel like I had to go see them, and so I'd do that, and then I was done with them, so I'd go hide in my office again. and. That's pretty much all it took. So let's see if this works. Great. So I'm actually using the driver in Go with an InfluxD library in Go to read all the sensor data and put it straight into an InfluxDB database and put it into here. So if this is actually working, I can breathe on that one. And with it, oh, that may not, that may be the bad thing there. There it goes. Hey, it works. So I just spiked the CO2 um, pretty well, actually. And I will also say that the CO2 in this room is actually the lowest that I've ever measured when I do my CO2 hardware demos. They almost always are higher, which is why people are passing out. At least that's what I tell myself. Um, <laughs> So uh, what I learned, I learned a lot ago. Um, I learned actually a lot easier than you think to do this. It was a lot easier than I thought. Um, and remember going into it, my idea was how hard can this be, right? I'll just port it to go. Well, it turned out to be actually as easy as I thought it was gonna be. And I actually think a lot more IoT stuff should be done in Go now. And in fact, um, that last point, um, that's 
more of what's kind of wrong with my brain. I actually think that a go on the metal runtime for IoT devices would be really cool. I have no idea how to do that. Um, so if anybody does, come talk to me. Let's start a project and do that. But the I, the fact that writing Go code for IoT sensors is actually is easier than I thought it was going to be leads me to believe that something like that, you know, people are running Python on the metal, and I hate Python. So why can't we do it with Go, right? So um, I'm actually... I think All right. Wrong screen. There we go. I'm under time, so I'm going to stick the landing. Um, that's how you can find me on the internet and on GitHub and email and everything else. Thank you. <laughs>